Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to uh, Pike County Commissioner's Court this April 28, 2014. We will open up the meeting with a word of prayer, and Ms. Smith, our county clerk, is uh, in the consent uh, to give us a word of prayer this morning, uh, followed by Clinton, the United States, and Texas Hall. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity, Lord, together as a county. Um, we just ask that you be with the commissioners this morning as they make decisions for the county and for the taxpayers, Lord. And um, we ask that you be with each person who works in this county, that each day that we are um, mindful of the opportunities and the responsibilities that have been given to us. Just be with us throughout this week, Lord. We continue to ask you for rain and uh, just guide and direct us in everything that we do. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 <laughs> right, the uh, first order of the agenda this morning will be the approval of the minutes from the uh, April uh, 14th meeting. I make a motion that we accept the minutes as presented. Second. Okay, it's been motion and uh, seconded to accept the uh, minutes as printed. Those in favor, show of hands. Passes for zero. Five zero. Uh, I'm sorry. And passes five zero. No problem. Uh, item two, the vouchers. It is considered an act upon the approval of payments for vouchers processed by the county auditor's office for the period of April 9th, 9th 2014 through April 22nd, 2014 in the amount of the total of checks coming 155080 through 155313 and wire number 363 through 372 in the amount of $2,439,229.50. Uh, Second for discussion. Just have a couple of questions for the court. Page number 10 of 27, check number 155191, the amount of $108,804 emergency management agreement. Carrie, I just want to confirm this is our cost sharing for the EOC, is that correct? That is correct. And then on that same page towards the bottom, check number 155204, the amount of $2,050, color ribbons four but it's cut off. I'm not sure what that description is. This is actually the kid print program and those ones are coming from donations that are going to share to us. Okay, thank you. Other questions I have for the court? Anyone else? Hearing none, uh, motion and segment to approve the vouchers with the necessary uh, questions uh, considering the vouchers. Those in favor, go ahead. Pass it's 5 0. Mm -hmm. Item 3 is the insurance report. It is to recognize the insurance report. Kay, do you have anything that uh, to uh, share with this morning? Uh, only to uh, ask you to note that last time um, I mentioned that we were kind of behind on the claims runs. Those have come in and we are up to date now. The fund is holding well. I'm still working with Bill Norwood with PAC to determine um, contract costs on the large claimant uh, specialty now. Thank you. Uh, your report so recognized. <clears throat> Item four is the treasury report. It is to recognize the treasury report and the A monthly cash report and B 2014 second quarter investment report. Ben, good morning. 
the main thing I wanted to let you know, um, we have 10,396,000 this morning in tech school, 26,000 in tech school crime, 12,121,000 in our checking account, which is earning 25 basis points, and then 10 million in our three month Cedars. Uh, That's earning 35 basis points. This Wednesday, we'll purchase another CD for $3,000, and we'll start our laddering portfolio. We started the 10, about 10 million last month. This month, we'll do another three million and then continue that for the last three years. Okay. And you said 3,000, did you mean 3, 3 million? million. Right. Okay. So, did I say 1,000? 3 million. Okay. And we'll keep that up through the years, so we'll continue earning those. That's our strategy. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Okay, Treasurer Poets will recognize <clears throat> item five is the time clock plus. And it's to hear a report on the time clock plus and take any action necessary. Good morning. Good morning. Morning. Um, as you know, HR and, and IT are uh, still continuing to utilize the time clock plus. Um, it's going well. We haven't run into any uh, major issues that we haven't been able to resolve yet. Um, we did bring on the second stage um, county uh, auditor purchasing uh, and collections have all been trained uh, and began punching this morning on Tom Clock Plus. Um, we also uh, have been in communication with treasurer's office and as soon as we get information from them to build the back end where they own they will come on. Uh, packets that we require uh, in order to build the back end part of Time Clock Plus are being prepared now for the next stage, for the third stage. Uh, that will be elections, jury, and tax office. Uh, I anticipate that the packets should be completed by the end of this week and we'll go out to those departments shortly thereafter um, to gather information from them for the back end of um, the, the building for their uh, particular departments. Once we get the information from them and get the back end built, um, then uh, we'll begin training and implementation for them. Uh, hopefully, <coughs> and it's my anticipation, um, that we will be able to bring on that third stage by late May, maybe first week of June, depending upon the flow and, and uh, if we run into difficulties with this stage that we've just implemented. <coughs> and then from there we'll move forward with the next stage. It came the first phase, it was IT and HR. Is right. That right. Okay. Right. Can you tell me what you mean by the uh, back end? Anytime we bring on a department, there is a, a good deal of information that has to be built into the system, such as you have to establish the users for that department, um, who those users will be, and build profiles for them. You also have to establish um, on the back side who within that department will have specific access to each individual employee within the, the department. Um, it, it may be that, especially in some of the larger departments, that you have um, subgroups within a department, uh, maybe supervisory groups, that uh, may have access to only clusters of employees that they supervise. That department director or elected official um, communicates with me how they want that to be set up and who they want to give access to which employees uh, and those supervisors then would, would work with those employee clusters to approve time, to review time that's clocked, um, and um, therefore the, we'll be able to close weeks then once all those approvals come in. But we have to build all the accrual balances, um, set the accrual rules for those employees, and 
uh, establish who those users will be and who, who will access each particular employee in that department. Then once we get that set up, then we can bring the department on and allow them to walk. One of the reasons, um, at least according to what I remember, is one of the reasons that we decided to kind of tackle this uh, uh, kind of approach with the software system was a huge efficiency gain for the departments that were manually keeping track of all of the time and all of the accrual rates. So I, I'm hopeful to hear what the departments might say after they're live and everything is kind of settled um, to really notice that efficiency gain. So, so we'll see how that goes well. And I know that was definitely um, an interest of the court at the time. Absolutely, and the system, once the accruals are built and loaded into the system, then um, once the department goes live, the system accumulates and accrues on its own. So that relieves the department from that responsibility. So the stages are working pretty well. Right? So far, um, we're, we're moving along. We just brought on the second <coughs> stage, and. And uh, I don't anticipate a great deal of trouble. We haven't seen a lot thus far. So, no national teams are going to wave your hands or anything. Not to my knowledge. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If we need to have any action on this at all, or Dave, what do you think, Dustin? Item six, share land utilities donation. And it should consider and act upon the acceptance of and use of donation from share land utilities. Commissioner Chair. A couple, it's been nearly two months ago that we had share land utilities here and make a presentation on. There are transmission lines that go through the north part of the county. Uh, at that time, she mentioned that when they constructed those towers, there was always leftover metal things and so they gathered that up and recycled it sold that back and so then there's there's some monies that they have given counties that these transmission lines go through just as a donation to, to use as we'd like um, <clears throat> I think Potter County is about the last county that has not accepted that a donation yet and uh, it is a five thousand dollar donation and uh, some of the other counties have used it for County libraries, just whatever we choose to use it for. But anyway, in order to get the money, we kind of need to uh, decide to accept it and then uh, how we'd like to use it. Um, Is motion to uh, on the first part of the acceptance? Yes, I'd, uh, I'd move that we accept the $5,000 donation from Sherry Land Utilities. Been moved and seconded to um, accept the five thousand donations of terms and utilities for Potter County. Those in favor, show hands. Passes five zero. And to the next order of uh, the direction for this, any suggestions, uh, Commissioner? I think there's a lot of places we could put it. Um, I've had a couple ideas, maybe three. But um, one of the things that, and I don't think we're ready to use it that way first, but. This is an idea I just wanted to throw out here because at some point we need to address it. Um, I was approached by a citizen who lives in the county outside the city. And uh, because they do live outside the city, the city libraries charge them $18 a year to uh, be able to use the library. And uh, at one time, of course I've talked to the city, and the city said at one time the county used to give thousand or whatever dollars towards towards that and then the, the citizens of the county could uh, could use the library at no cost um i've talked to the city they have not given me a final answer what it might cost us if we would reopen that because at some point we quit giving that donation not a donation but a payment to the city so i think that would affect a lot of people but all of our citizens could use the library. So that, that's one way, and I, but I don't know what kind of money we're talking about there. So we might want to look at something. <clears throat> the other thing, our volunteer fire department always can use some money for, uh, for equipment to send our volunteers out to fight fires, 
And the third idea I had was uh, possibly the uh, Sheriff Citizens Academy. Mm -hmm. Bring citizens in, gives them a 12 week training, both uh, for adults in the uh, spring and in the, in the fall they do students. So. One, uh, one suggestion I might add um, is the Employee Appreciation Committee, uh, Commissioner, that, that you sit on. Um, you know, with a dollar size like that, it may be nice to get each employee a little something. Um, I don't know what that might be, but that might be a nice little increase to that budget. Uh, that I think is definitely an opportunity to recognize all employees locally in Clark County. Just, just an idea. <coughs> I don't think we have to put all the money in one pot sure, and yes. spread the grant to different, different areas. Well, for, first of all, we, we have accepted this one. That's what we got to the bigger load, heavy load out of the way. A mm -hmm. uh, question uh, in favor. At, at what time did we uh, get any recollection of when we stopped the contributions to the city as far as the library? I mean, that seems like a heavy. I, I think that's, I, I don't know. I mean, as far as I know, we never have done that. So we may have been long time ago. I'm not aware of any judge or I see I see the judge shaking his head too, so that's that's a long time. <laughs> Between all the so three that's of us. That's all the law uses for me. And as you indicated that that can be spread over a number of, of different yeah. conditions. So that's that that makes it pretty good. So um uh, is there a uh, a drop dead date on when we need to decide on, on the allocation of those funds? I don't know that there's a drop dead date. They just have the money that we can use for whatever. Okay. So we can just pull it up for suggestions. Why don't we just um, uh, take it till the next meeting and then we have a uh, focus on which direction we want to go and how we want to disseminate it. Let's say it's better suggestions that I can share. No, one time you mentioned it. I mentioned Acrolyte and uh, some kids, kids. Some kids in, involved in, in Acrolyte there too. It only costs like 25 bucks a kid to get up and involved in the And they have uh, mentioned it before about the county helping out with it. And uh, maybe being able to pay for these kids that can't pay for themselves. So I think maybe we could uh, drop some money out there. There's plenty of opportunities. Mm -hmm. Only just uh, two ideas, and uh, the next meeting we decide. Okay. <coughs> All right. Um, item number seven: equipment purchase. It was to consider and act upon the purchase of an eco lawn <coughs> top dresser spreader in the amount of. $5,400 from Profits Mon and Leisure LTD Limited and to transfer funds with the, within the facility's maintenance budget as per the requirements of the auditor. <coughs> I'm good morning. Good morning. How's everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, uh, sorry. The, the top dress machine is, is something that it's one piece of equipment that the county does not have that I would like to add to it. Profits, Lawn, and Leisure, LTD. It, um, the way it's written is, um, is that to, to be purchased from this? It, it makes me indicate that that is the, a line item. No, that's the vendor. The vendor, to be purchased from that vendor, okay. Um, and is there a reason that since it's over 5,000 that we're discussing it now instead of during budget time? 
it's just prime time of doing it. It's not anything I've ever asked for. Uh, the unit was, was uh, I, I never knew about the unit uh, up until a couple months ago and, and started learning about it. Um, it's, it's available for, you know, normally for like large commercial uh, jobs, but, but this unit is something that, that we can you know, bring to the fleet and, and start utilizing it here. Um, if we had it professionally done, uh, what we're asking to do, we would probably get uh, two performances before we could purchase our own uh, piece of equipment to do it. So it's just a learning curve for some of the guys and for myself. I've, I've never done it, I've never it's here. So. What would this equipment do, just for my own lack of knowledge? Um, it's, well, throughout, throughout the process of uh, spring lawn care, when you do uh, aeration, there's several different reasons why you do aeration. It's to, to lessen compaction. It's also to introduce oxygen and water to your soil. And, and after you do the aeration process, you, you like to, to top dress. It's something that golf courses do with their greens. Um, every once a month or so, they go in and they top dress the greens to, to lessen the compaction and also to, to improve the filtration of water and oxygen throughout your, your root system. So um, it's just, this is the top dress with uh, sand or compost or something. Uh, yeah, in, in the areas that we're trying to level things out, we'll use sand. In the areas that we're trying to revitalize nutrients to the soil, we will use uh, black topsoil. And does this process, um, I'm assuming, help with the traffic that, that walks across the lawn? Yeah. Uh, it, it will support that or, or make the impact of the foot traffic, um, decrease the impact of foot traffic? Foot, your, your foot traffic actually has more compaction than, than any piece of equipment we do put on the lawn. So the more people walk on it, uh, the more compacted the, the surface is going to be. <coughs> just, um, and whenever you get compaction, you get you, you, you start to adding up the ability to create fungus and, and, and further damage to the yard. So this is just a, a, another step uh, to reassuring that that lawn is good. And is there any maintenance that goes along with this piece of equipment that we there need is. to be mindful of for the budget? Um, as far as mindful of the budget, no, probably not. All the maintenance and stuff will be done in house on that. We won't we try to do all the maintenance ourselves as much as possible, um, unless it's just going to really affect the performance of the let me, Excuse me, let me address that to two to go back to your uh, question, Commissioner. Uh, Within our budget, we set aside uh, funds for our tree program. Uh, Nick has done a great job in getting trees put back on this property. We're kind of at the end of the point right now, planting trees for this year. This is some funds that was left over. And you've got a yard out of here probably worth about a billion and a half dollars. Mm -hmm. So that's that's why Nick is wanting to take care of the yard uh, on this piece of equipment. Right, Any <coughs> questions from the court? One my final question is, will there be a, a training class or a seminar, or you guys know how to use the equipment today? Is any of that included in the, in the vendor contract? No, ma'am, it's not. Okay. It's not. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. Okay. There is a YouTube video, I guess I should have <laughs> it on our emails for everybody to see. But, uh, but no, there's, there's no training required. Uh, yeah. There's a move to Second. approve the... Uh, the purchase of the Echo Lawn Tractor Top Dresser Spreader in the amount of $5,400. It's been probably seconded. Those in favor, show of hands. Commissioner, I'm just going to say, I think the motion also needs to include the budget transfer. Is that correct, Carrie? That's very good. Thanks for the um, to the main account. Is that correct, Judge? Is that what you'd like to say, General Operating the Capital? Get that, Julie. Mm -hmm. So noted for the uh, correction to the uh, motion and second. <coughs> Those in favor? Pass this five zero. Thank you so much, Joe. Thank you. Thank Item number eight is a children maintenance contract. It's considered an act upon awarding a contract for the Santa Fe building children maintenance to TD Industry in the annual amount of $13,600 from TCPN contract number R5055. 
Okay. Um, our our chiller contract on the Santa Fe building um, expired into this month, and, and on on Monday it will be without coverage. And so through this process, we received quotes um, from from our current company, which is Johnson Controls, at the seventeen through twenty. And then this this new company, and I say they're new, they're new to us, but they've been around a while, TDI Industries, and, and obviously their cost is a lot cheaper. So uh, um, I think maintenance um, is comfortable with them and the, the quality of, of service they'll bring to the county. And so we're recommending to go with the 13 through 16 to be able to save the county a little money. So save it what, like $4,000? Okay, so moved and seconded to uh, approve of the purchase. Uh, questions in the court? I just have one question, Mike. Uh, I'm assuming all the service levels, everything will stay the same. Okay. okay. Motion on the floor and seconded. Those in favor, show hands. Passes 5 0. Thank you. Thank you. Item number nine. Is the water formal bid number 1086-14 is to consider an act upon awarding formal bid number 1086-14 Santa Fe building elevator chief repair to advance elevator incorporated in the amount of $36,735 as the lowest and best bid. Um, this was this is for the repair of, of car number three two at the Santa Fe building. We had brought this a couple months ago. I know Mike has talked about it a couple of times here in court. Um, we did put a formal bid out with the specs that um, our elevator consultant wrote for us, and um, we received three bids. And um, adva again, advanced elevator is low, and, and I think for Mike's recommendation and also the elevator consultant. We couldn't find any reason not to use them, so that's our recommendation. And these bids be so different. Honestly, if I had to give my opinion on that, uh, the Tiss and Krupp, uh, they're the ones that originally turned in our proposal to Nick, valued at that right there. Uh, we went back and reevaluated the work. I think they just put a lot of money in there to cover themselves. Uh, they're not going to budge. The Shinner Corporation, I think they're a little skeptical also. The advanced group that you have right there, uh, that actual contractor uh, has been around the block a time or two. They know what they're doing. It's the older generation that is used to working on this type of equipment. And these other two right here are using younger technicians that do not have experience to do it. So they got a lot of time and stuff built into this. Uh, one of the biggest issues on this would probably be the lead time, if you've noticed right there. Um, advanced is a little longer than the other two contractors. I would probably say that they've kind of cushioned right there because something can always go wrong when you order parts. Uh, this type right here from Hollister Whitney. Uh, special made parts just for this project. Um, I still feel comfortable with advanced due to the uh, Due to the supervision that built this project, the older generation has done this type of work. My, the one line item um, that catches my attention is the overtime rate, the disparity of that. I think Advance has 650 um, overtime rate uh, versus some of the other vendors, one being as low as 185. Do we monitor that? How do, what are our internal controls? And nobody is allowed to perform any overtime work without any written authorization from myself. Uh, we were control of that. This is just, I mean, if it just really had to happen, it was an emergency or something like that, I do not allow them to come to the work all the time. Uh, we currently, if you recall, we're down to just two elevators over there. This right here will get the elevator number two back in operation for we can move toward our modernization. Commissioners, if you agree, this will be the budget transfer as well in the district court's building maintenance account. <coughs> I think we had one hundred eight thousand dollars that, uh, as of last week, that is one of our largest accounts. I've had projects in there just money in case something does happen. Uh, whenever I brought this to court last time, that was one of the uh, requests. You know that we need to do. So instead of increasing anything, I just ask that you take it out of our district court's building account transfer. Thank you. Thank you. 
I make a motion that we accept formal bid 1086-14 to advance elevator, the amount of $36,735 and funds to be transferred from the district court's construction account to Santa Fe construction account. Exactly. It's the elevator. Elevator. Exactly. Make your Okay. You made that equation for the elevator. The maintenance, 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 maintenance
it recently changed? I've heard a little bit of difference. It, it, it's, it's been a hodgepodge, depending on the project and the building and all that sort of thing. And, and that, that's one reason that we're looking at having an outside vendor come in, is because just what David said, we end up with a, you know, with this you know, duct tape and belly wire systems you know, across the county. This will enable us to standardize things. So I, I'm on board. You said the owner was here this morning? Yes. yes. <laughs> Is with you. My name is Dwight Hanson with AV Plus Media Solutions. We uh, made a commitment to, to the community and, uh, and the technologies that uh, have been advanced in the last 10 years. We thank you for the opportunity to kind of be of service to the, to the county in this, in this regard. You've been in Amarillo a long time, Mr. Yes, I've been here since 92. <laughs> I came um, as a, I, I left uh, California in 1992. I was looking for a place to settle down. I met my wife here, trying to get That's where my grandchildren went. That's what I'm saying. This is you right here and you're going to grow. We're growing as a company. We have uh, seven employees. Uh, that we're, we're evaluating a seventh employee right now. So, um, L2 technician, I call that a level two. You know, take care of all the things that I have to do. I need to transition my uh, expertise more to the design and engineering. And uh, so my technicians will be uh, able, able to. We're, we're experts in cooking better uh, implementation. For, you don't end up with a duct tape and banging wire uh, kind of hodgepodge of equipment solutions. Yeah. What's, your, what's your address? My is address it, is where's it located? 4002 Business Park Drive, down there in the Western Business Park. In Um, just a follow-up question for Jason and Mike, and so just to piggyback off of a comment that you said of kind of this hodgepodge system, so taking into account if the court moves forward with one vendor, who will oversee that project, who will initiate the call, who really kind of owns um, a line item that you know could get costly in the future with technology? I, I'm still not understanding that. Let me, let me say something first. Years ago, we took care of that. Or we took care of that uh, back when Jason come or prior to Jason coming on. The uh, IT director at that time, uh, we gave control to them, so they took care of all the camera systems. Then Jason got involved. Nick is the gentleman that's been working with Jason and everything. I think it'd be more of a joint venture, I presume, between maintenance and IT department in order to address this issue to where we work together and bring any issues back to the court. It can be very costly, and I agree with the comment made, you know, by Jason. We have a high price of so many different camera systems throughout this county and everything. Uh, I have one request for you. I'll let Nick take care of this. Uh, from my perspective, the response time, what is it if you get a call and you have to come out? Uh, Y'all may already know this answer. I'm just curious. We have, excuse me, we have courts that we have to deal with, and Spur of the moment, if a judge requires somebody to be there, we've got to get somebody there real quick. We're uh, committed to a two hour response time on emergency issues and a 24 hour on minor issues. And really, just a, a word of caution as I see us moving towards this vendor model, um, I would like to think that we're taking advantage of internal house expertise before calling a vendor. Um, at kind of premium dollar. Or will we still be doing that? I'm assuming some of that expertise resides in IT uh, to troubleshoot, you know, obviously kind of a technician one. I may not be calling it the right thing, so certainly forgive me. Uh, but what my, my point of caution is that we're always calling a vendor when there's expertise that we have hired internal um, to troubleshoot that. I would assume, and of course we haven't discussed this in detail, but I would assume that the first call is still going to be our help desk. Uh, I know that, that, that's how it's been. Sure. Or, or I put it this way I know that we get phone calls. <laughs> you, you guys may also get them. 
and do it. We'll try to resolve things. Obviously, if it's, you know, if it's cable of plug, we're going to plug it back in. That sort of thing. It, it's, it's a matter of, this is more, I, my understanding, this is more for new projects, new installations, that sort of thing. They're going to involve both of our departments. But then we have an outside vendor we can call, and we, we know we're always going to get system X, whatever that is. You know, put in whatever building it's going to. And our team would be a part of the new project and, and really helping with that manpower, if you will, if you will, from a, a technical end of what we can do in house. Right. Um, Carrie, for the a budget line item, to my knowledge, we don't have a line item to speak to this type of maintenance. Where does this fall? Uh, and Jason and I have kind of discussed that we may need to do some remaking on technology related line items. So Thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm gonna take a motion. I'll second. I've been uh, properly moved and seconded to award um, the individual service contract to App Plus Media Solutions at the lowest bid designated at uh, Item 12, informant items. So I consider I can find the following informant items. Road and bridge, it's a resignation of Richard Moyer, a maintenance technician, effective April 17, 2014. You want to take these as a single or all together? Okay, so all together, uh, item B, uh, road and bridge, informant of Jeff Jerry Miller, Sumner Moore, effective May 5, 2014. And I see an information technology, the informant of Brandon <coughs> Putnam, network engineer, effective April 14, 2014. Make a motion that we accept the employment items as presented. Second. Okay, the motion is on the floor to accept the uh, formal items that are presented. Also, yeah. it's properly second. Can we have a, we've got a couple of yeah, no. not this notice in the pack of the yeah. I'm assuming we can't take action on them yeah. today since they're not listed. I think we can. It's just an employment item. I don't, I don't see a problem with that. I mean, the agenda item gives you notice that we're going to consider some, it gives a public notice to consider employment items. And, and they, you know, that's, if they're interested in that, they're, they're here to attend. The detail I think is, is, is not that much of a difference here to make a, that, that we permit you for that. Do you see any issues? Uh, we're going to have some, some uh, uh, questioning on this. And, and I will try to. I will have questions. Okay, let's, let's go ahead and take these first three items that are listed on the agenda item. And A, B, and C. Uh, motions on the floor to approve and also second it. Those in favor, show of hands. K passes 5 0. And to your point, Dave, uh, we'll just list them as uh, it was B and P. We'll include that in the, uh, I'll just have a Okay. Item D. I think they're the last two in the packet yes. that were presented. Okay. Item D looks like it's the maintenance. And, and another reason we're comfortable with the time with that too is the what the main two items are just approvals of salary. Random item of the employee is Brandon Currington, is that correct? Uh, title of position would be system administrator for the IT department. And the, uh, it's, like it's a, actually a salary increase 
for outstanding work in, uh, uh, in the amount of $60,008 for the year beginning May 1st, 2014. funds will actually be uh, position moved from 1130 uh, to cover the increase uh, to $2,370 annually. Is that right? You want to speak to that? You had some questions? On sure. Uh, uh, well, is it actually both employment items really echo one another. Um, and I have visited with Jason and, and more, let me just say, certainly not the employees because I think all of our employees are extremely valuable at this county. Uh, but the process of moving funds from one position to the other to offset increases, um, to my knowledge, the majority of the counties do not allow these fund transfers um, in a, from a salary line item. And I continue to see huge disparities within departments of income ranges. I personally have a concern with the salary amount, and again, not the people and the expertise, but this aligns with some of our directors um, that have certainly been at the county for quite some time and are pay scales on a director level. So I do have concerns with um, transferring funds, and, and again, I think both of these gentlemen are extremely capable um, and certainly warrant that, but there's, there are concerns with this continuing to happen through this county, from my perspective. Anyone else? I know that we've been busy, by the way. So, uh, uh, we've been, been speaking to that point for a length of time and really haven't broached out there to uh, set a drama to exactly where we are, where we should be. Going. That needs to be included, and I think that's an item that is going to have to be inserted for the budget that's, that's forthcoming. So, anyone else, uh, Commissioner, you have some issues and concerns? Or questions? Well, is Jason back? Yes, yeah, yeah, Jason. How long have these folks been with us? Uh, Brandon's been here like right at five years, uh, and the other gentleman's been here almost two years. Let me include uh, Rick Lewis. That uh, Rick Lewis is a network engineer uh, for IT, and a salary increase of sixty thousand one hundred thirty-six dollars for outstanding work. And um, note on the to use for funds moved from the position to for $1,130. Uh, position number 1130.200 to cover the increase uh, for the amount of 2,272. Was that position 1130? Uh, is that position been eliminated? <coughs> no, the, that position, in part of restructuring the department, was to set up a couple of junior level positions, some senior positions. And you know, as, as folks, you know, as folks up here move on, move out, that sort of thing, these folks want to take on some new skills and sort of thing, and show experience. And that's just, just part of the process. The net effect of these two guys, I mean, after the fact is they're take on pay good. Make a difference in about 150 dollars a month. But I think it does. I mean, um, speaks to the process, and again, certainly not these two individuals. And so, for me personally, these are always difficult conversations because I think inherent the the people factor becomes the primary discussion when it is not the people, but the process and the salary range um, paralleling with some of our directors. Um, and so. You know, I think that's part of what our commission does is take a global look at what's happening to employees across the landscape, if you will. Um, and, and just a follow up comment, Kay, not to put you on the spot here, but I'd be very interested from the Texas Association of Counties, maybe uh, Michelle's expertise. I know she's done some HR consulting for us in some recent seminars of how other commissions are handling this, because um, what I've been told is this is not um, allowed as a general rule throughout Texas. Now, again, that's secondhand, so I want to validate that. But it would be interesting because we've been dealing with this at least since my tenure on the court. I can certainly reach out to Michelle and communicate with her and get her uh, input. Dave, you want to uh, speak to that? I know that you, you had some expression. I was just trying to make a smart remark that I had told many times. 
that we do things different for other counties and state. But there's a cost so, to that. So, so, right. so I, I wouldn't say it until I ask. <laughs> You're always allowed to put your comments in. Okay? It's hard out here. Anyway, it's my understanding that you can move budget money within the uh, salary block, but you can't take money for maintenance and move it up to salary. Well, I, and I think one thing that, I mean, to me, legally speaking, I talk about transfers and I talk about amendments. And if you wanted to, if you wanted to transfer money from one position to another, uh, in other words, it's like a, a budget position already, that's that's a that is not a budget amendment. And so I think that's you can do that. Uh, and now it's a little complicated in the personnel area because the commissioners do have they have more authority over you know employment positions. So like uh, you know like. If, if someone wants to create a new employment position, the commissioners have to approve that, whatever, whatever the department is. So it, it gets a little more complicated than that. And so commissioners do, do need to approve uh, changes in, to some degree of, of, of salary. But I do think it's permissible to, to move that money around. With, with, with just a, it does require court approval, because it's just a, a, a transfer. You see what I'm saying? It doesn't affect the bottom line. It just we're just moving money from one pocket to another. Well, and I think um, this commission would be surprised of the huge disparities in the departments. And I think this is just part of the process. Um, and with salaries being the biggest line item of our budget, for me, not really knowing this formal process and what it should be, um, and we could do better, I guess. Is, I will add one kind of practical consideration. I know that every, not every year, but, but we will often talk at budget time about, you know, about the need to do that. And the, and the time to start addressing that is for this budget is right now. Because we're going to get, we want to avoid, we've had times in years past when, when we've actually kind of disrupted the budget process by trying to kind of all, all of a sudden retool it. And so if you want to do that, uh, now is a good time to get started with that process. I, I, yeah, I, I agree. We mentioned that we were targeted this budget year for that express purpose. So yes, I think that's that's good. I think that's what we need to do is look at. Uh, and how we go about doing that. I know in past years we had some type of survey that was, was put out in it, not only for this county of like size, but throughout the, the state. And certainly we would need uh, some guidance from TAG also in, in that manner. Maybe we can show too along yeah, with I that think line. Those, I think the salary survey you're referencing is well over 10 years old, if I remember right. I think Scott showed that to us at one point. Um, I, I want to say it's old as 12 years, but okay. I'll say 10 years right. just to be safe. Yeah. It's, it's so I, I do think the time is is really prime. And if there, if there are resources at TAC that I continue to kind of learn about what they offer really free to us, I think, for my opinion, it would be a good sampling of what other counties have done and how they um, have handled it, this, this issue, but really also, um, I'm, I'm sure I'm not going to call it the right thing, Kay, is salary kind of control points. With this position um, is maybe entry level here at this dollar amount, but it really has a control point of what the max, if, if you will. A salary structure. Salary structure is a better word. It's my understanding, and I haven't checked into it recently but it's my understanding that TAC um, is not actively involved now in a, a salary survey but that some of the other counties have gone out uh, in more recent years and done that but we could certainly go out on the serves and ask the questions and see uh, and also check with TAC to be sure where they are with regard to salary studies um, within counties and or even insight to help us establish our own um, process. And really today's point is Pirate County is very unique. And so we know that, you know, if there are resources that they can come in house to help us establish that salary structure. A, a salary, an in-house homegrown, if you will, salary study uh, could certainly be done, but um, be mindful that it would be a, a huge undertaking. It would be a very, um, tedious task to, to look at everything and, and place it. Um, if there's a study that already exists with, with similar 
counties of our size, um, it, to me, it would make more sense to piggyback on that. Uh, there's no need to reinvent the wheel if there's something out there. I'm, I'm not familiar with what's actually out there right now. If you do a salary, excuse me, if you do a salary survey, you need to have the elected officials and the department heads involved because we're the ones that know the employees' job duties. Mm -hmm. We have done two, Harry, correct me if I'm wrong, we've been through two salary surveys within the last 20 years or so. And we established the job descriptions. We, we compared ourselves to county of our size. Tom Green, everybody compares Potter County to Tom Green. Here's an example. The maintenance department of Potter County is nowhere close to the maintenance department of Tom Green County. Our job duties are totally different. We have more buildings to maintain than what they do. So there's a big disparity right there just in the job. I, I, I agree. And uh, I, I think we need to step out on that and uh, get some, some guidance from us. Uh, the child department and uh, uh, if, if, if anything from similar counties that have already grossed out in that area it's certainly bad and, and attack whatever they might be able to uh, to help us in that and, and, and that manner I think that, that'll be a good way to go uh, but for the uh, for the interest of the what is the interest of this uh, this court in respect to the item B and E on the uh, employment items <laughs> okay, what do we want to Look at um, you also have your little help uh, <laughs> uh, as far as uh, I guess advocating for those uh, uh, increase in salary. Yes, I'm trying to figure out what we're trying to get out of a salary survey because. It, we're trying to get all positions at the same level. I think we're really missing the boat because like we were just talked about, there's different responsibilities. There's different demands for IT workers that are really good compared to other positions in the county. So I, I don't know, it really makes it hard if we have to say, you know, there are department heads that aren't getting Sixty thousand dollars, but these IT guys don't deserve it. I don't know. I'm, no, I, 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 I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm having a hard time and, and definitely, getting that square. Mike. Commissioner, if I may, I definitely want to say I, this is not that the employees do not deserve it. And so again, for me, employment items are always difficult to have this conversation because everybody deserves it, quite honestly, in this county. Um, so it's definitely not that. And uh, my perspective is more of a salary structure. I think salary survey is a terminology we use, and everybody is comfortable with but I'm I, I, I think I would like to see us to get to somewhat of a structure I, I agree and I think that also we have to focus on certain specific skill sets mm -hmm. of those in the middle particularly in those departments certainly would be uh, different than uh, and I'm not going to name the departments as far as their there is a expertise but certainly there are specific skill sets that are unique and germane that uh, uh, would be different and that certainly would have to have some considered thought as far as uh, Addressing this structure, and it, it, it's it's past time that we get started on it. And uh, uh, so you're right. I think it's going to be a very involved system, and I think that we need to include all the department heads and all the elected officials in this. But I think we need to move on it and uh, start setting some kind of um, uh, boundaries in it, and, and as far as a, a foundation of where we can go from this forward. The, but, the idea of looking at, at all of the positions with regard to what they actually and the appropriate salary placement for those positions that is what we're talking about what what i mean when i talk about salary survey and salary structures um, because you're absolutely right all of those things have a profound impact on how that structure um, ends up what it looks like at the end and we would absolutely need um, full involvement from department heads and elected officials to, to be able to, to define each position to ensure that it's placed accurately within that structure. Um, let's settle this point here, the first, as far as where we are on this. Uh, uh, How do these particular salaries uh, compare to those of other people in the county or in the city uh, of, of similar uh, work? Our the folks in the city have a considerably for this skill set that we're talking with these right. two guys, they're making less now 
even after this little increase than they would be if they were in the city or for the Marine Corps. And that's just in the practical public sector. Obviously, they put the private sector in the a lot more. And like I said, this is part of a restructuring effort to get, you know, to get, to get this department. Like I said, I can't speak to what other departments have, what they do. I'm not responsible for that. My guys. Uh, to set up the structure where we've got some senior, tenured senior type folks and we've got entry level positions and when you know this is part of that this is basically taking a couple of guys that were almost there and put them into that group and they're already there they've been through certification classes they've done outstanding work i get confidence from the sheriff the department heads from from everybody these two guys in particular so that's why they got sent out i don't have any hard burner or even uh in this uh request and because it is looking at a specific skill set, this is not to undermine the department here <coughs> and directors that we have throughout the county, but we do know and understand there are specific uh, uh, drug requirements and again, underlining that skill set that uh, very few would have uh, to maintain their uh, commitment to the county. So I don't really have an issue with uh, looking at that, this increase at this point. I know it. I want to, as, a, as an addendum to that, for us to move out on this structure issue that we've been talking about for a number of years. So having said that, any more questions? Uh, well, I want to make a motion that we uh, accept the increases uh, for both these employees. Second. Okay. It's been uh, probably moved and second to accept the increase for the two employees for IT. Uh, the amount has already been requested. Do I need to repeat that? Okay. Um, those in favor, show of hands. Those opposed, um, uh, passes 4 1. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, uh, item 13, the Potter County uh, projects. This is your report on various Potter County projects and to take any action necessary. Is there no, this okay. is just a verbal report. Uh, is acoustical panels working? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we have completed everything in the building. We went through Pine Sweet uh, list last week. We're looking next Monday, Tuesday to correct the items. Shortly after that, around mid May, I'll have the Texas Historic Commission in to perform their walkthrough with me. And then we'll see the supplemental funding uh, that we agree upon that they would uh, work with them. Uh, Second category would be uh, the county courthouse preservation. Just to make you aware, out of the local contractors, uh, we had 13 items originally pending. I'm working with the last of the local contractors on replacing all of the ceiling or caulking on this entire building uh, on the roof levels. We have found out from the manufacturer that the project had actually failed. So Larry Ersick is still involved, even though we don't have to do it two years later and the local contractor on getting this work completed. Uh, do we have any standing alone? No, where does that put us? I'm curious though, where does that put us on the list? Of we have nine items remaining after we complete this uh, local contractor. The biggest dollar item is the, your millwork right now. Okay. Uh, to replace all this millwork in the building. And we have some painting to be done within the building that was not part of our painting contract or somebody else's fault. Yes. What about the, it wasn't there uh, an open item in the basement? I don't have my notes, so I can definitely. Item number one is your elevator floor that's cracked in here. We know it's difficult to move into the building. Uh, you have four warranty items that have to deal with nothing but millwork from Julie's area up to all these counters here to all the new millwork throughout the building. You have uh, two areas up on the fifth floor, southwest, uh, hot check area. Uh, to where we've had some plaster damage up there. Video Raymond had some plaster damage. Uh, we have three of those areas that need to be repainted. About uh, these? Yes, sir. That is that, part of that. What does that do? That's, I'm waiting on the air back and turn. We cannot do any of the remaining scopes beyond what I'm currently doing right now with the local contract without the journey. And they've received our final payment. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Journeyman has received our final payment. Mm -hmm. Are we just waiting on them to respond to that? No. I'll update y'all for next week. Okay. 
they've now they, I, I, they have not responded. They've been given the uh, I've, I've got the letter back in case they receive the notice that we were required to give. Okay. And basically, we asked. I can I can tell you this without worrying about any kind of legal confidentiality. Uh, the question to them was, hey, we're required to go to mediation, uh, and and we have some issues that are not resolved, and we need to go back to mediation unless. If you don't, if I don't hear back in a certain amount of time, we're going to assume you don't want to go to mediation. You're claiming that, but we've got to offer it first. And so I have not heard back. I'm assuming that they are declining to go back to mediation. And what does the amount of time expire when we need to hear back from them? Um, actually, I don't know. I, I think our, as far as the performance bond, we believe our time runs out in June. Okay. More time than that. <clears throat> on the warranty, we have more time. The actual warranty claim depends on what kind of claim you want to make. But as far as the performance bond, uh, that time, uh, get the company involved in that, uh, that time runs out in the You know, any future project part of the county does, I ask that you please do not pay the general contractor. Mm -hmm. So we have a warranty. <laughs> it's a big issue. Uh, Next item is on our hail damage on the emergency scopes of work of the Santa Fe building. Uh, we are here enough to do a complete replacement on the 13th uh, deck up there. That's, we just have a few items remaining. Santa Fe, I mean, uh, the uh, Sheriff's Office project, we have completed all the roofing over there. We're waiting on manufacturer inspections and site cleanup. The uh, non-emergency projects, we had 14 original. Uh, the commissioners court at your last meeting and had five others for the request of the Tri-State Fair Board. Uh, being the north and south public restrooms, I'll go ahead and give my opinion right now. I'll give you a written report, but the roofs are old. They're worn out. Uh, no real signs of hail damage up there due to the type of gravel roof it is. That gravel roofs is what they got to put on the bottom of the in these areas. Uh, the uh, maintenance barn out there uh, used to be the sheriff's department. I would not, I would not crawl out on them. It's rusting out so bad. You can stand in ground right and see all the rust up there. We did check the structure beneath it before we attempted to do that. And the structure is good. It's just an old roof system. Here's what was unusual. Uh, Kimball 1 and Kimball 2 being in the northeast area, right north of the Glen Mac area out there. And uh, the buildings that's been in question. When we looked at these two buildings out there, Kimball 2 being the furthest north of those buildings, did receive some hail damage. The one directly south of it, Kimball 1, between it and the Glen Mac, very little damage. So, I mean, something that apparently happened out there through the past <laughs> through so I'm just making it where that I'll give you a written report on that uh, we're currently awaiting the insurance company's report to come in so. okay. the uh, correctional facility kitchen waste on the project I'll be bringing you a uh, final project conclusion here at the next meeting we completed all work out there we're currently performing punch list items have to be corrected at this time the way we close that documents Fire Station 3, I would go to executive session on that here in a little bit. Uh, the XL Energy rebate program that you approved at the last meeting. This is uh, <clears throat> where we uh, agree to bring in a sponsor. I have visited with this sponsor regarding this project. Uh, the buildings that are eligible, you have to have a cool roof on top of it, be it your CO5 membrane or uh, TPO roofs, these white roofs. Now, they kind of went a little further there, so we've got a lot of properties that we thought were, could be considered and will not be considered. I'm going to start with the Santa Fe building. I was hoping to claim every roof on that building. You can only claim a roof when you have an air-conditioned environment beneath it. Our penthouse area does not qualify, so we're only eligible for two roof levels on that entire building. We will be eligible to file the LED lighting retrofit that we're looking to do in the future elevator modernization on the motors over there. The uh, Sheriff's Administration, uh, the only area we'll be able to do is the north portion of the roof project over there. 
And then the district courts is still an unknown uh, whether or not they're going to do it because the areas that were recovered over there recently were strictly over mechanical uh, elevator areas. The uh, description of what they consider as a permanent uh, air conditioning is still up to the question right now how XL interprets. The uh, recommissioning program with XL will be uh, starting at within this week to get into that. Do we know what the dollar amounts will be um, or any anticipation? On rebate. I'm on the rebate? Not until they come in. I'll have to give them all of the nomenclature information, all of our equipment that cools that area for chillers, place to bring get exchange food. I got to give them all this information, work with them to where they can establish how we can get a savings back off just that footprint of just the <coughs> It'll be a lot of work yeah. just to figure that out. And you're saying the footprint is um, really a lot less than we thought when we brought this to the court. Due to, we got into the requirements last week from Mr. Purcell, and um, there's a lot more stipulations right there. You have to do this, you have to meet these requirements. Thanks, Mike. Uh, item number 15, the general report is 514, 93 females, 8 of them are housed in children. Uh, any insurance item? Nothing there. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, item number 11th is uh, an executive session that is a uh, puzzle on our agenda to the real property. It's for fire station number three. And it's two items to be looked at to A, to hold an executive session to deliberate the purchase, exchange, or value of real property where a deliberation and open meeting would have a detrimental effect on the position of the county and negotiation with the third party, the third person pursuant to 551.072, it's code, government code. And item B, to take any action appropriate for after the executive session. So at this point, we will adjourn to the Commission Conference Room for executive session at 10 10. Okay. Okay. Reconvening from executive session at 10.38 a.m. And the matter of the executive session, real problem for fire station three, court met in executive session and have agreed to authorize the deliberation with the clientele from the purchaser. And that's all. <laughs> Joe made a make motion. We yeah, we need to take some, actually no action. So no action. Session, right? Okay, we do need to have a motion. Yes, I move that uh, the Potter County Commissioner's Court authorize our purchasing agent uh, Dave Harder to negotiate with the uh, third party in regards to buying land for the uh, fire station number three. So, uh, just, just. And it's been moved and seconded to uh, move forward uh, with the allowing the purchasing agent to deliver and negotiate with the third party with respect to purchasing land for fire station three. Those in favor, show hands. Okay, passes five zero. And any um, executive sessions uh, for this meeting? Other than that. Uh, any agenda items or issues? Yes, agenda? I do have an issue with item number 26. Uh, I asked last meeting that we have the uh, Tears Board of Directors appointments be placed on the agenda and was not. And uh, can we have it by the next meeting? Okay. Who's going to take responsibility? Okay, let's have someone do it. I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll add to my list of agenda. Okay, and I'll also put Sherry Lane back on. So we can discuss that. Okay. Anything else to come full court? This is Monday, the 28th. If not, court sends.
and we can adjourn. Thank you very much.